Hi, good evening. It's May 19th, 2020. Dr. Noel Williams giving a COVID update, Optimal Health Associates. A uh, couple things tonight. Uh, first, we'll do statistics about 5 million in the world, 323,000 deaths, more than 1.5 million in the United States, just about 92,000 deaths, uh, about 5,600 5, in Oklahoma, uh, just shy of 300 deaths. Um, slow steady rises in Oklahoma, hovering 19, 20,000 new cases every day in the United States. I mean, that's much better than the 30,000 a day cases um, we were having. And it kind of makes you wonder a little bit about strategy, and I think that's what we want to talk about tonight. What's a good strategy moving forward? I think we know a few things. And remember, the purpose of shelter in place initially was because the purpose was to limit disease spread because we didn't understand the disease we didn't understand covid we had limited data coming out of china and southeast asia some of the chinese data ended up being really good on a genomic level and basic science but the actual clinical management clinical implications spread and all that was completely suppressed by the chinese government and so that kind of set us up to fail so what have we learned well Number one is, let's think about where there's been lots of cases, where there's been a, a, a focal disease event. So it's been meatpacking plants, that's happened all over the world. It's been in elderly facilities, nursing homes, etc. cetera. Um, it's been sometimes at businesses or at a business conference. Uh, but where hasn't it been? Where hasn't it been? Think about it. What group hasn't had a pulse? It's schools. It's daycares, it's nurseries, it's labor and delivery units. I mean, those groups did not get a pulse of disease. You didn't hear about, oh, someone was infected at a labor and delivery unit and then the entire labor and delivery unit got it and all the pregnant moms got it and all the babies got it. That didn't happen. Likewise, you haven't heard of it being in a daycare center in a big cluster or in a school in a big cluster. And it gets back to why. It gets back to immune systems and innate immunity. And this is what we have to start thinking about as we progress because the goal is normalization. And that offends some people when I say that, that we have to start trying to let go of the fear and move forward. But you have to remember, so far the government spent $3.7 trillion roughly on trying to get things stabilized and help people. And, and I want to be clear, there are groups who got left out in this, and I'm not defending how the money was spent or anything like that, but they've, the, at least the government tried. But that's $11,000 a person, roughly, in the United States. That is a lot of money. And somehow we have to pay that money back or help the government. Otherwise, where are we going to be? Even more in debt to the Chinese. Who are, who's going to control even more of our lives. And if you kind of think about it, not as a conspiratist, because I don't think it started out this way, who's the big winner in this whole thing? The Chinese. They've destroyed it. They've inadvertently destroyed our economy. Um, and now they're going to carry more of our debt and control more of our future. So we have to think about what can we do to help ourselves and help our country. And so when we think about the disease, innate immunity is everything. And so how do we reproduce that? We reproduce that with supplements, zinc, melatonin. You can do things like exosomes, which is a stem cell product. You can do it with shots of Wharton's jelly and get, you, and get your micro RNA content up in your system. It's really kind of an interesting scientific model for things you can do. Um, but we have to normalize. So how do we go about normalizing? Well, first we've got to bring it into, break it into subgroups. So one, if you're under 65 and you're healthy and you don't have a lot of medical problems or you have one or two minor ones, if you're taking your vitamins, you are in good shape to go out. Wear your mask, but you can go out and do stuff. You can go to a restaurant and eat. You can do things. Now, if you're still in a place where there's a lot of disease going on, where it's rising, which is some places in Texas and a few other places, you have to know your own community you need to be more careful. But if you're in Oklahoma City where the levels have started to come down, we're not having any significant growth, and you're a healthy person and you're on your supplements, you can go out, you can do things. You can see 
your, chil your grandchildren, which really annoys some people that I say that, but it's true, you can. Your grandchildren wanna see you, you wanna see them. We need to get socialization going because depression, anxiety, suicide, all that stuff starting to do what? Go up, and we don't want that. Economic downturn, if we go into a major depression because of this, which is pretty likely if we don't get our economy going, that is going to be devastating to health and survivability. So for everyone who's saying he's not worrying about people's health, no, I'm worrying about people's health. The estimate right now from the last two months is there's 300,000 undiagnosed cancers that would have normally been diagnosed already. 300,000 that haven't been diagnosed because people haven't gone to the doctor and they haven't had their screening colonoscopies and they haven't had their screening chest x-rays and people who've had sundry symptoms that would have been worked up haven't gone in yet and there's limited access. So no, we have to start realizing that if we continue on the course of sheltering completely in place, we're gonna even lose more people and that's what we have to balance. You have to shift your strategy, especially since we know now that who's at the greatest risk for getting sick? It's older people and malnourished people. So if you're not malnourished, and you are if you're not taking a multivitamin and vitamin D, because our food supply is mediocre, you can go start going about your business. Wear a mask, use your hand sanitizer, wash your hands all the time, and start getting out there, start participating, help the restaurants, help people. Now, if you have a lot of medical problems, especially hypertension, diabetes, obesity, apnea, it's a different kettle of fish for you. You need to be more conservative. But if you're not in that group, you're fine. Now, if you're over 65 and you're 65 to 75, but you're really pretty healthy and you don't have a lot of medical issues, again, if you're on your zinc, your multivitamin, your vitamin D, you can start visiting your family. You can go to a restaurant, stay in small groups. I'm not saying, hey, go to Disneyland with 50 people. <laughs> Just start normalizing a little bit. Get out there and fish, get out there and walk, get out there and do stuff because we need normalization. Because remember, this is our gap time. We basically are gonna have between now and probably the end of September, to normalize as much as we can before we would see a second wave. And if a second wave hits in October, then we're gonna to have to go back in a little bit. And that's gonna be very important, but we're not in that mode right now. So we're not gonna have this huge bump up by normalization in lower risk environments. And that's what I really want people to focus on. Um, number two, Let's talk about Plaquenil again for the 4,000th time because Trump is on it and that's become super political and every single, sorry, idiot stick in the planet doesn't understand Plaquenil because of politics. Well, when he gave his news conference today, one of the things he did is he turned it over to some physicians from Health and Human Services who pointed out something again, which I pointed out, is the VA study is not valid. If you only give Plaquenil to the sickest patients at the very end of life, it's not gonna be very helpful. So if you look at the 2,200 patients in studies who've gotten Plaquenil, there was 63 deaths. If you subtract out the VA patients who only got it at the very end of life, it's 2,000, but we go from 63 deaths to nine. Pretty amazing numbers, <laughs> okay? And there, and, the studies are being done and the research is being done by reasonably intelligent people who don't have any financial gain, any. They're just trying to save lives. The CIRMO data came out again today and again emphasized how Plaquenil is still considered the most efficacious intervention in the world. There is not, when you're looking at 6,700 doctors, they're not all idiots. And since they're not in the United States, maybe they don't really care about Trump and they don't really care about the Democrats, they're just trying to provide care, which is what they're doing. And so it makes sense. Plus there's a basic science model, meaning there's basic science research showing why it works. So there you go, versus remdesivir, which again, the guy who wrote the main editorial against it is a paid consultant to uh, Gilead Pharmaceuticals. Basically 11 of the people who are on the board that 
made a decision to approve it without a double-blinded randomized controlled study are paid consultants or have been of Gilead. So very fishy stuff. Now, I'm not saying remdesivir isn't something that can't be useful and additive, but to go through the process of just approving it without a final double-blinded controlled trial makes it a u unique medicine in the, in the history of the United States, the FDA. Um, finally, again, I would just emphasize what's the incidence of cardiac toxicities in the FDA data bank for Plaquenil and more than 50 million um, treatment courses, which are or prescription fills, which are usually a month or more. It's 1.2 cardiac events per million. So that means if you take Plaquenil, you have a 99.999% chance of it not affecting your heart. That's pretty amazing for all the hullabaloo about Plaquenil. So you're much greater risk for getting hit by a car, choking to death, um, stumbling and breaking your arm than you are for getting damage from Plaquenil. Now, if you're an older person, you're over 75 and you have lots of heart meds, yes, there, we need to think about it more, but the recommendations don't even say to make us think about more as doctors. I mean, they don't say that at all. They don't say it. So, I mean, it's all made up stuff. So just keep that in mind. I'm kind of beating the dead horse per se, but it's just like Epstein didn't die spontaneously in that prison. Um, I think we have to be, we got to look at the obvious things. Occam's razor. I mean, Epstein knew too much. Something happened. Plaquenil's cheap and effective. It, it, something's happening. I brought up the Epstein thing as a gag to make my wife happy, but you know, it's kind of the same old thing. You got to look at the common sense approach and we have to look at our economy and getting our economy back in shape. We have to let people have small but meaningful graduation parties now if you're in lower risk areas. You need to allow birthday parties. We can go to dinner. We can do things. It's okay. You got to get over the fear at this point. But again, I would have everyone on vitamins. If, you have, if you're on vitamins, you're going to be in good shape. If you're not on vitamins, you're going to be at higher risk. I think when you go to the stores, you got to look at the exits and entryways. And that's the key stuff. Big shout out. Thank you to um, my physician friends and other friends, Carl Roskowski, Bill Bondurant, Dave Chansom, amongst many others. Uh, shout out to Sam Hammonds. Uh, shout out to Ashley Lee. Um, anyone I'm missing that I should be thanking lately, Kim? There's tons of people. Tons of people. Um, Linda Jeffries, um, just gosh. So many people have been so supportive and nice and kind to me. Um, and then for those of you who think I'm a total, total wackadoodle and lying all the time, I, it's just not in me to do that. So I may be strange, but I'm not lying. I'm giving you the truth as I see it based on research data. So um, good luck trying to find uh, other data that refutes mine. And please uh, email me journal articles if you can find anything that shows that what I'm saying is incorrect. I'm happy to learn from everyone. So thank you and good night.